Everybody. Hi guys, so this video is about why did we buy a Faro? It's a common question that gets asked and Sarah's always telling me everybody's asking why we have a Faro. So we decided instead of just answering all the questions in the comments, we're going to make a video about it. <laughs> so basically, when we decided that we were going to buy a sailing boat, our bank account didn't allow us to have the privilege to go boat shopping on whatever we wanted. My 54 foot of Mel just wasn't on the list. And we had no sailing experience, so we didn't want to spend a lot on our first boat anyway. In a nutshell, we found Catalpa. Um, we actually paid $15,000, which was all of our budget we had at the time. It was all our money, not our budget. We had $15,000, they wanted more for Catalpa, but, uh, Originally it was 45000 um, and we knew that the market also for ferro boats was very poor so we knew that putting an offer of a small amount like that for Catalpa, um, we would probably end up with Catalpa, which we did. When we bought Catalpa it was in Magnetic Island, which is up near Townsville in Australia and we figured that if we spent $15,000 on Catalpa and sailed her home um, to see whether the family liked sailing. Get a boat that we can have a little bit more of a practice on to see if we do like sailing and... And from our knowledge and from going and looking at Catalpa, we thought she was ready to go. <laughs> so I suppose the big question is why do we have Catalpa? At the time we wanted to go sailing, it was the only thing we could really afford. Why do we still have Catalpa? <laughs> okay, so the original plan was to get Catalpa Yes, we sailed her home to Tweed Heads, which is along the east coast of Australia. Loved every second of it um, and decided, yeah, this is what we want to do. We want to make this our reality. What our game plan was, we started a business. Catalpa was kind of abandoned for a year or so uh, while we set up our business. And after we had our business up and running and you know, pretty good lifestyle. We, we started thinking about what we were going to do. Um, we had more money than we did when we were looking at buying Catalpa and our plan was to do up Catalpa, sell her and get the boat that we actually wanted to sail the world in. Then looking at boats once Catalpa was getting ready to uh, sell and then start to look towards an upgrade. But what we found was all the fiberglass boats that we could afford actually needed a lot of work done to them. Um, so we basically would have spent all our money on a boat that wasn't ready to and go. And had absolutely nothing on it. And then the next thing was, yeah, um, the boats that we did like that were cruise ready um, often had a really high price tag on them and were worth every penny. So after we put a deposit on a boat actually in the Sundays, we went and looked at it. Um, it was uh, needed so much more work than what we thought that after looking and looking and looking, nothing really was in our budget that came up. So we decided that, hey, we got Catalpa to a pretty good stage. Um, all we need to do is do a, a few more things, add a few more things. We had the money to do it and then we'll have money to actually leave. With the age that the kids are at, we didn't want to plan for the next five years on our dream cruise boat. We actually wanted to go now. And that was a thing that sort of separated us between a much larger production-y sort of boat set up for cruising. So with the kids at the age they are now, we wanted to make that step and say, hey, let's not miss this opportunity to go cruising as a family. So that's another thing why we stuck with Catalpa. Okay, the other um, question we get asked that all the time is, is having a ferro boat lots of maintenance? I don't even know where to start on this. Um, it's like a never ending debate. Um, you know, this is actually our hull here. So it's reasonably thick. It contains a steel structure in a nutshell. Um, and in the, pr in the process when they build it, has a chicken wire to hold everything together. Um, Let's face it, if you watch our videos, you know that there's lots of maintenance. <laughs> yeah, there's maintenance. But not to say that there's not maintenance on any boat. I think the maintenance for us on this boat, um, I'm reasonably handy with things, so... Reasonably. Actually, 
<laughs> have some sort of hand. If you can ice a cake, I think you can fix a ferro. Well, hang on. Let's stop. <laughs> What's your background, honey? Well, I am a plasterer by trade, an internal drywall, drip rock, whatever you want to call it. So, playing with He's compounds. Also, what else have you done? A little bit of this and that, but he's done steel fixing and concreting, and he's worked in the building industry since he was 15. So, yes, I don't find it very challenging fixing um, a ferro. The products today, with the mega epoxy which we use, um, the epoxy based compounds are so so strong. Um, so, when we first actually pulled Katalpa out, water blast the growth off the boat and in that process actually blew a hole in our boat. I'd never done any fix work, uh, any patchwork on a ferro boat, um, so I was like mortified. I was just looking at this hole in our boat and I thought, well, we've had a bit of fun for a year on it and that was our original goal, so be it. But it wasn't long after I thought, nah, I'm going to have a little dig in here and a chip around and before I knew it, I had a guy with a ferro boat that was in the yard Give him his tips and techniques on fixing. I had a engineer uh, slash bridge builder, which said, "Hey Lee, you know, I can see you're going to need a fair bit of compound here. Here's my account. Um, this is the compound you're going to need, which was a mega epoxy, which he put me onto. It was quite an easy fix. Uh, daunting and just yeah, it was very scary looking at it, but we got it done and uh, got it done. And a year later, we slipped the boat, and the patch is still good. So. Yeah." Okay, for us, I can fix it and maintain it as we go. Well, I could even fix a hole right now if someone was to run into us without slipping the boat. He patches small bubbles like this roughly around every two to three months. I think they all have maintenance issues and it's it really depends on your budget. Um, we didn't have a big budget, so we went with Ferro. I'm able to maintain it. So hopefully that answers uh, why we still why we have a Ferro. Okay, um, the, the next question is... You know, should I buy a ferro boat? Yeah, um, that's not up to us. That's, uh, <laughs> that's so not up you know, to us. Like it wasn't my ideal choice of a boat. He still looks at, he was looking at boats this morning. Okay, so he's never stopped looking at boats. He what you're buying. A bargain is a bargain if, you know, everything that you tick off your list is right. If we were to look at another boat again, sales engine, um, electronics, you know, massive things. If you've got a boat that's, uh, the sails are no good, there's $10,000. You've got an engine, there's another ten. You, you know, like, it depends on your budget, like. When we bought Catalpa, we basically got on Catalpa, walked down into here, and I went, oh, it's home. It's what I want. We didn't look at the hull. Um, we didn't check anything. We basically got on her and had a look around and went, yeah. Yeah, well, and we didn't survey the boat, which, you know, is a big no-no. Like, I, th I pretty much had a look around and thought, well, I know there's going to be a list of problems, and I could see a few of them anyway, but it came down to the budget, so... So we were really lucky because that we've been told since owning a ferro, there's, um, there's either a good... it's either a good boat or it's not. Bose is the thickness consistency in a ferro. This, I've actually had a few penetrations now that we've done in the boat and um, it's very consistent. Um, people look at it and go, wow, that is that a ferro? So there's We some... have lots of people ask us what the boat's made out of, which um, it was obviously built really well. It's, it's a really good boat. She sails real well, from what we know, she sails really fine. Hey, we were passing cats on the way up the east yeah. coast of Australia and I didn't know what was going on, but... We get up to eight knots. We're not in a rush. We're just cruising. Um, we, yeah, like we said, we're not sailors. We basically had a... what did we have? A 26-foot... Roberts for about Roberts. a year or so. When the kids were really little. But we were running out of time. We had the dream of this big fancy boat, but we also have kids and we wanted to experience sailing our dream was to with bring, our children so yeah well our dream was to bring the kids up on the boat and to give them an, an education of the world and that's why we went you know what time's running out if we buy a boat and we still need to save to go then you know the kids are going to be going to be out of home and it'll just be us yeah. so why we're sailing around on a ferro boat is money reasons and it was in our budget and we're just making it happen. 
Okay, conclusion guys, I'm buying a ferro boat. Um, read some books, do some research. Know your handyman capabilities, I suppose. I do have a little idea on how to fix something. Um, <laughs> if you don't have any skills, um, I wouldn't recommend it. Actually, we've got a few more questions maybe we'll answer now. Does, like Solid. a heavy displacement Solid. boat, as you'd say. Like we're, we're happy, like, we found that we, we've never, we've owned a fiberglass boat, but it was small, so I bobbed around anyway. But we've found that when we're in rough anchorages, or even rough seas, Catalpa is pretty It's very good. sea kindly, I suppose, as people would say, yeah. and give you an engine that I have access to. Oh! If you're buying a boat, the That's biggest big tip, this is the biggest tip if you're buying a boat, make sure the engine is accessible. Hey there. Yeah, it's, it's very important. And where the starter motor is placed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have access to everything in the engine? Yeah. I wouldn't personally buy a ferro boat that needed all the work done to it, you would be better off putting your money into a fiberglass boat as your resale value would be a lot greater. But in saying that, if someone has been cruising in a ferro boat and is set up with all the gear and the requirements that you feel you need... And they've maintained it along the way, the biggest thing is if they're living on the boat, it'll be in a lot better condition yep. than if it's been sitting um, on a mooring or sitting in a... Someone marina. that's got a spare hour every day that's cruising to keep everything maintained as opposed to someone that hops on their boat once a year at the marina or on the mooring. Um, yeah, you're going to have a lot more luck with someone that's living on it. So basically, it's up to you. Don't let not having any money stop you from cruising or buying a boat. Um, if you would like us to talk about how we do what we do, um, what our budget is, and so on. Comment down below, um, and maybe we'll put a video together on exactly how we live and, and what we spend. How we do it, because a lot of people say, how do you do it? Spend? Do we have money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then we do have money. <laughs> so we're cruising on a budget, if you haven't noticed. Um, I didn't even know how to sail. We actually pulled our head sail out on our first little boat um, to get coming home to get near the barn. I thought I better pull this sail in. It looks a bit rough. I didn't even know how to pull it back in once we'd unfurled our head sail. So we had very little knowledge on sailing. So, I trusted him. <laughs> I got on. I got on board that boat. Went out to sea with him. <laughs> and I always will. <laughs> and um, in saying that, we knew nothing. We also have grown up right next to the ocean. Lee's had boats, fishing boats his whole entire life. We've both surfed, so we have water knowledge and I think that's a really big bonus if yeah. you're learning to sail. Yeah, definitely. Another, actually, yeah. another really common question that we get asked is what size motor is on our tender and what size tender do we have? So our tender is 3.4 metres um, and a great size. We put a 15 horsepower motor on there. So if anything, we got a little bit bigger, but we wouldn't definitely not have anything smaller than what yeah. we have. And um, we pack our tender up. You didn't have the right tender. Really put some thought into it yes. before you buy one and buy a really, really good one. Spend the money first up so you don't have to yes. keep spending it along the way. Yeah. For us, our tender, I think, only that we dive in that, um, and do what we do in our tender. I think a rigid inflatable would be our next one out of aluminium. So there was no deflation issues, very robust and rugged. Um, yeah. Yeah, but we'll keep patching our old girl at the moment. You use your tender every single day. Question, so if there's anything you want to know, let us know and we're going to start putting some content together for people that um, are curious about what we do. Yeah, so you can either comment down below or you can send us an email or a message on Facebook. Um, I'll answer, I always check and I'll, I'll answer when I can. Thanks for watching. If you like our video, press like. If you want to see all of our other videos, then subscribe. But um, thanks heaps, guys. We love you all. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.